My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. We're going to take a look today at a brand new feature in Photoshop CS4, and it's called Cooler. It's an interactive color panel that allows you greater design options. You can both browse for new colors and design your own custom color themes from scratch. Now, Cooler is available as an online application for those of you not using Photoshop CS4. Just go to Cooler. K U L E R dot Adobe dot com, and you can interact with it there. But with Photoshop CS4, it's built right in. Let's take a look. To access Cooler, you could choose Window, Extensions, Cooler, and this will bring up the Cooler window. Now, the panel here has lots of things to it. There are a total of three tabs. The first one is the About tab, which simply explains what Cooler is. It's going to let you browse and search for lots of color themes, as well as comment on those themes, and it's going to give you the ability to create and save your own themes. If you create an Adobe ID, which is absolutely free and told how inside of Cooler here, you will be able to store your own color themes for use throughout different applications and on even other machines. So let's see how it works. You can click Browse, and this is going to go ahead and search. Now, right now, it came up with several recommendations based upon the highest rated for all time. If I want to, I could do a search. In this case, I'll type in D E S E R T for desert and press return. And you'll see that several color palettes came up. Now, which one you choose is obviously a personal choice, but there's lots of things you could do with these color palettes. For example, we have this Desert Dusk palette, and I'm going to go ahead and add that to my swatches panel. If we switch over to swatches where our colors are stored, you'll see it's been loaded at the very end there. I'm going to use this to actually tint the image. Let's go ahead and add a gradient map. We can do that by clicking on the bottom of the Layers panel and choosing Gradient Map. We'll then click on the gradient map to access our colors, and what I want to do is assign these colors we just used. I'm going to go ahead and choose the darker purple, and over here for the light end, we'll go to the light pink. And we'll click in here to add one more in the middle, and we'll make that the medium purple that they used. And then click OK. Now, we just created a duotone type effect using those colors. What I want to do is tint the image. So I'll go ahead and change its mode to something like color, which is a little more subtle, or even more gentle, something like soft light, which just does a nice job of tinting the image and bringing those colors out a little bit more. Let's go ahead and undo that for a second. And what I'd like to do now is make our own color choices. Cooler is very flexible, so besides browsing, you can make your own individual colors based upon an initial selection. I'll go ahead over here and click on Create, and this gives me several color models to choose from. You'll see we have analogous, triad, complementary, shades, etc. This generally works by the base color here. You click on base color and then find a color in the image you want to use, such as the blue sky. Let's go ahead and throw that gradient map layer away. And what I want to do now is grab the eyedropper, and we're going to eyedropper on the blue sky, then hold down the Option or Alt key and eyedropper on some of the green objects in the scene. That picked up as a little bit yellow. There we go. We're finding some green in there. If you need to, you can zoom in, make it easier to pick. Eye for eyedropper. There we go. There's some green. That looks pretty good. Command or Control Zero to zoom out. Now, with that selected, you could then say use the foreground color as your base color, and it loaded in that blue. Currently, we have two shades, so it's giving me a darker blue and a lighter blue. Now, this is really useful if you want to create a gradient tint for the sky. That would work just fine. You can go ahead and grab your gradient tool and then load those colors in and tint it to give it like a blue grad. 
or click here on each swatch and you can actually add a color in and it will show you more variations going from darker to lighter. If you don't want to do shades, try out some of the other models like Compound which will select multiple colors, in this case recommending some darker grays all the way through oranges and browns. This is a very flexible color tool and it does use traditional color theory to make these recommendations. Let's try something a little simpler like Analgous. And you'll see it does a nice job of selecting the original color and then going out around an arc to show you more. You can always spread those out as you see fit to further modify it and you get a nice even spread of color there using that initial color as your selection. There we go. So that looked great. If I wanted to store it, piece of cake. You would click Save Theme and it would ask you for a name. I'm going to call this Desert Candy and click Save. It stored the values in there. If I want to actually add this to swatches, it's just a simple click and it adds the colors in. And if I wanted to, I could actually upload this theme to Cooler by clicking. When I do that, it's going to launch a web browser and it's going to ask you for some information. And it's not a big deal. You would just enter it in. Notice here's the online version of Cooler, where we actually have several additional colors and a larger interface. If you want to sign in, just click the Sign In button, as well as your password, and tell it to remember you for the future. There we go. And I'm going to let this be a public profile. We'll give it a name again, and a quick description. Fun colors with desert hues and click save and that has now been entered into the Cooler community. When you load your material up to the Cooler community, you're opening yourself up to both compliments and criticism, but you're also taking part in something bigger. This is your chance to donate to the larger community and actually add things. Notice it's picked up some keywords here. And if I browse and take a look at recent themes, it will show up. We could say, show us the newest. And notice, there's my theme that I just created. Since I'm here, I'll go ahead and give that five stars, because why not? And then other people will actually get a chance to vote. And you see lots of different colors that people have come up with. Cooler's a ton of fun, both in Photoshop and online. Think of it as social color. My name is Rich Harrington. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Be sure to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com, where you have tons of free downloads, news and information, and additional video tutorials. And while you're there, take a look at Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4 from Peach Pit Press. It's available for order at 35% off if you use the discount code UAP2 over at peachpit.com. Thanks again.